Good afternoon. My name's Pepper Corey. Come on up. And I'm from Beaufort, North Carolina. And I'm working with Studio E Fabrics, which is a division of Jaftex. And Jaftex, I'm sure you know the name, okay? It was the minnow that swallowed the whale. Jaftex is also blank, free spirit, Henry Glass. Uh, and there may be others that I'm not even aware of, but one day we'll become aware of. Anyway, Javtex Corporation is the umbrella situation for where I work. And I do peppered cottons, and these are shot cottons. Now, it's worth it to ask at every one of these, is there anyone here who does not understand the definition of shot cotton? Because I'm always happy to share it. And I can give you the shortest definition to give to your customers. What's a shot cotton? Great. A shot cotton is a fabric which on the surface appears as a solid color. But when you take, look closely at it, the weft threads are one color and the warp threads are another. And what happens there is you produce a shade that's slightly mutable, goes with a lot of things. Okay, so that's a shot cotton, and they've been around for hundreds of years. Uh, there are shot silks, shot linens, you know, and uh, combinations thereof. So right now, shot cottons are very hot. They have been. Thank you very much. I believe we're going on year five? It's either four or five. That knowledgeable voice in the back is my boss, Scott Fortunoff, and you will probably see him at the Studio E booth and other Jaftex booths as well. Um, which brings me to there are other people in the room associated with these companies. I think we have some reps here today. Can I see the hands? Wow, we have three reps. Okay, where, the lady in black, where are you from? Okay, if you're from that area. Okay, oh great. And then. Oh my goodness, anyway. Uh, these are all people you should be aware of, uh, you know, if you go to the booth and take a look at what's happening. Um, the title of this schoolhouse was about trends. And we do think that there are some upcoming trends that concern the products I'm most associated with. So, does everybody know what Sashiko is? Well, we're aware of it. And a lot of us say it incorrectly. We say, Sashiko. Or the other one I liked was, Shashimi. Not quite. <laughs> Honestly, don't believe spell check when it comes to Sashiko, okay? <laughs> Sashiko is a Japanese word and it means little stab stitch, or little stab. It's also a nickname applied to annoying children in Japan, sashiko, you know, which means you're a little pain. Um, so that's one of the things I'd like for you to be aware of. In its commonest form, sashiko is large white stitches usually seen against indigo fabric. And we tend to kind of put it in a box and say, all sashiko is blue and white, which is not true. However, I would like to show you this small sample. I'm teaching sashiko on Monday, and the class has been full for months. And so most often sashiko is represented by something like this. In fact, this is what we will make in class. What I find that's happening, as other people who do handwork are discovering, is that handwork and machine work instead of being opposing camps, are coming closer and closer together. And so you may have a quilt that has lovely hand wool applique, and it is machine quilted, and that's just fine. The standards of quilt shows are also reflecting the fact that it's no longer either or, one or the other, us versus them. It is now all, we stitch this quilt and we get it done together, you know? Now, I can quilt by hand, by domestic machine, and by long arm. I usually don't do the last two because I'm not very good at it. So I have great machine quilters near me, and they take care of that for me, for which I am very grateful. So what we're seeing is more Sashiko, and next year at this time, 
if everything's right and the creek don't rise, I'll have my book uh, with C&T on Sashiko will be out. And so I'll be doing a schoolhouse for Studio E, but then another one for C&T. So the fabrics that you see in this pillow, for the most part, are um, Studio E fabrics. And there's another word that's out there that people don't understand. What do you think a boro is? B-O-R-O. -O. Yes. Uh, however, boro in its true form from Japan means rags. Rags. And it's actually a style. It is a style of fabric uh, use that is patch on patch. Artistic, okay? We're not talking messy. Oh, that's, that's in the next segment. Um, we're talking sophisticated patches laid on top of each other, often embellished by sashiko. There we go. Okay, so two different Japanese forms are coming together. All right, now, another form that we're seeing all over the internet, it seems to be like a good blog subject, okay? So one blog writer will read another's and go, oh, I know what that is. Visible mending, also called mindful mending. Visible mending simply means those expensive blue jeans, the ones two years ago that you paid for that had the artistic holes in them, you are now patching them and because you don't know how to darn, you're doing it in a visible manner. <coughs> Mindful mending is when you're going, so there, <laughs> I have big stitches and I like them. Now, a few writers have tried to uh, blend mindful mending into kind of a zen-like contemplation. Like you take up this needle and, and you'll get in the zone and you'll be really happy and you, know, you won't have to take aspirin. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's just really kind of an offshoot. All of this comes out of the Japanese tradition of us appreciating what to them were common textiles. Sashiko in Japan, it was not an embellishment to begin with. It was darning. Boro in Japan was not artistic placement of patches. It was rag on rag on rag until there was, you know, something that was thick enough to serve as like a household cleaning pad for the wood floors. That's where it came from, the commonest thing. But you will see these terms bandied about, especially on the internet, in small, I call them cupcake size things. You know, things that are three paragraphs long, five pictures and two hot links. That's the formula. Um, you're gonna see that more and more. What I'm more interested in is what this implies, which is that even though our craft has, in the, its doing, moved largely to machine work, and I am not opposed to that, what we do to refresh that is we go back into the traditions of handwork and we bring to us the things that interest us. Things such as Sue Spargo's terrific wool embroidery, you know? Not everyone is going to make a crazy quilt like Judith Montano makes. However, we bring her back and we take a look at those crazy quilt stitches, but we still continue to finish the quilt by machine because that's who we are. We are 21st century people. So um, I'm going to look for just a moment at this more because I want to show you how Boro relates particularly to peppered cottons. Peppered cottons or shot cottons. Remember that thing about two different colors? Well, if you put patches down of different colors of shot cottons and you sewed so that the fraying only stops at the stitching, what you get is a preview of the colors that are involved in each shot cotton. You then, of course, have to choose a background fabric that it shows on. Next class up, Boro quilts. But uh, this is something I thought you might be interested in. I, I can pass it around. Look here on the front, there's Sashiko. Look on the back and you see Boro. Okay, so I'm gonna start that right here. You're welcome to handle it. The, the buzzer will go off if it goes out into the hall. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's my teaching sample on Monday. And I'd like to show you a couple of other things that have um, come up this week. I just got back from my friendly machine quilter. This little quilt 
which is made from a yard and a half of a cave facet print. It's one of his pastel ones. It's one of his older ones. A friend gave me a yard and a half and said, you're the only person I know that can do something with this. And I put it together with shades of peppered cottons to make a medallion quilt in very soft and vague shades. This is going to my friend, Mike. Mike is the manager of my local Dunkin' Donuts, okay? Mike and his wife got married last year and she is expecting. And she says she's going to have the baby in December. We don't think so. We think from the size of her, it's going to be November. And so I don't sell my quilts. I, does it make any sense that I can't afford to sell my quilts? You know, but if for some reason I'm very fond of you, I might give you a quilt. So Mike and his wife, Kendall, are getting this quilt next week. And we hope it's in time before the baby comes because she's big as a house. Uh, so we have different shades of peppered cottons here and then on the binding. And the back is the blue-gray called aluminum, okay? The blue that's here that blends so well with this is a blue that comes up again in what I'm going to show you for the newest 108-inch wides. It is a blue chambray. And a chambray is a shot cotton in which half of the warp threads are white. And this goes way back, I'm going to reach for that card, into the, I don't know, American psyche, men's work shirts. And they've been around for ages and ages and ages. And this color came out last year. It's called Bluebell. And it has sold so well that Studio E has decided to present it to you in the new 108 inch wide width. And I think it will be very popular as a quilt back. Uh, and we have the new gray, which is a cross weave of darkest black and whitest white, make tweed. And these three colors here have been in the line since the beginning. So they are constant sellers. This one's called Blue Jay. And then we have Oyster, which is a gray white. You know how popular gray is. So this is a gray friendly white. And then finally, have your customers ask for it? Well, maybe not, but they will. 108 inch wide orange back. And this is the, the color called Paprika. And you know how popular orange is in fabric lines. All you need to do to prove that to yourself is to go down on the floor and see how many oranges, apricots, shrimpy tones are out there. This is the kind of backing that will complement those quilts and make a dramatic statement. So these are our five new colors we'd like to introduce to you in the 108 inch wides. They will be available next year and talk to your rep about when they're going to shi uh, uh, ship to you. Thank you. Six. June? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It ships out June 6th? It just ships out sometime in June. I think six means the, just okay. the general month. Okay. Not to be confused with five skews. Five skews and six is months. Not hard to uh, understand. Now, I've had very good luck with these 108 inch wides. Uh, and I think one of the nicest things is how lovely and soft they are once they are quilted. And I, I like to pre-wash my fabric. Uh, that's what I do. And I love the way that they draw up and the color becomes a little more intense on them. There was a question there? No? Uh, The what? The yes. Third, the third, the third are no, there, there are. I think we're dropping two. One or one or two. I think sand is being dropped, which is a tan. Uh, this is oyster, and then I believe aluminum is being dropped from the 108. Okay, aluminum is this color, which is staying in the 45s. Okay, but as a 108, it hasn't performed as well. Okay. Yes. Yes. 
here at NIT has shot copies, and we have shot copies. But I will tell you, Kate likes his little finer, so he can do his stitch work. And Pepper, when we went and we started this, she kept saying, it's got to make it heavier. And we kept going back for more. And they definitely are very different, and probably for two different customers. Yeah. That's, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. OK, pass card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd like to show you another quilt, which was brought to me by a friend. Because occasionally you will get people who think, I'm making a pattern. I can only make it in fabrics from that one line. So I have a friend who is a quilt teacher. Her name is Barbara Black. And this is the quilt she's now using for what sort of class, Barbara? Beginning quilt making in a local shop, five-week class. OK. And it combines a kaif facet, a very bright color. It combines shot cottons, other kaif facets here. There's some grunge running around in this. Oh, that's by another company. <laughs> but if you run a store, you know you have to make samples from what you have on hand. OK? So Barbara said that I could show this if I thought it had enough shot cotton in it. And I do. And of course, it has my favorite orange there as the binding. That's great. And I think for a beginning quilting class, this is a very reasonable project. Do you remember when we used to teach quilting and we'd teach like a different block every week and we tried to jam into the last lesson? Quilting binding. You know, the whole thing had to be done. And we know, we know that that can't be done. Yeah. I would like to hear from anyone else who um, has had an experience with the shot cottons or has a question about them? No? I can, I can say we sell the entire collection. Thank you. Right from the beginning, the regular cottons and the next boy. Um, I think it sells extremely well also with uh, Marsha Durs. Um, shops who uh, carry her collection as we do, and people looking for a more authentic, organic back. Yes, the white are nice. What I think sets the shot cottons aside from uh, any other back is the character that the fabric has. So if you have a fabric designer that has a lot of character, um, it makes an awesome back. Now, you need to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm currently Mill Web Fabrics, Crystal Virginia. That's right. She started out online, then went into a brick and mortar store, and now does both, yeah. and now does both, and is one of probably the biggest fabric retailers in the US. Okay, all right, that's, that's not a chain. But, but, but it's, it's, I think you have a, a unique product. Uh, there's no fabric solid that, has, that is so one of a kind as any other solid. Thank so you. If a shop has, uh, is looking for a solid collection, there are several ones to consider. If you have made that choice and you're looking for another one, then you fit very well in the current trend of organic looking fabric. It fits with big stitching, it fits with sashi yeah. It's all correct, so that's why it goes well with Marshall Durs, as it goes with Cape, although mm. with the new shop comes in Cape, I think I would separate that with the shop. Um, so I think you have a unique unique place for that. Thank you. And, um, it quills up beautifully. Yes, all it does. It's a white well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you, you understand. Um, I interviewed you a long time ago uh, when I wrote a column for... Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. But this is when, Carly, you were making the big transition into the brick and mortar store. And you have a great eye, and I'm so pleased that you carry my fabrics. Thank you. And I have a lot of customers in a lot of different styles. I go from traditional to uh, modern fabric. But currently, the people that are doing uh, organic clothes, like uh, Essex, uh, Robert Kaufman, it's another name, but it's the style of customer that's looking for that. So uh, Robert Kaufman, Essex Linen, Marcia Durs, Shop uh, Hattons, you go perfectly well with that. And in extra wide, you're the only one in the store. So if a shop is looking for something, <laughs> You Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to put in just a word for to keep your eye on the trends for Sashiko and for Boro, you know, patch style. 
It doesn't have to mean messy or raggedy, even though it means rags in Japanese, you know, but we're going to see that more and more. Have any of you noticed in the catalogs like of women's clothing that you get that printed patchworks have come back in? Yes. You know, and they don't all look like printed bandanas anymore. Okay, so there's another thing we never thought would reoccur again, yeah. and, it's, and it's back. And a lot of those printed patchworks look like patch on patch. You know, so that's coming back. We're on the front end of that trend. Also, if next year, if the book goes well, it will be out at this time, and I'm sure they will start advertising it at spring market. I just pushed all the samples <laughs> towards an address in California for C&T to photograph. They said, can you take the photographs? And I said, absolutely not. My iPhone is not good enough. And they said, iPhone, ooh. And so all the photography in the book, which the uh, working title is The Sashiko Project, will be done professionally. And they said, where do you want the, 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 the photos taken? And I said, do you know anyone who owns a Frank Lloyd Wright house? <laughs> because I thought the samples would look really great in that atmosphere. I don't know that that's going to happen. But we can hope. Thank you very much. Do come by our booth right at the end here of this handout. It's 838. What is this about? This is about, this is your cheat sheet. You are welcome to go home and photocopy this for you and your employees because how many patterns are coming out now in weirdo sizes? Yes. Oh, the finished quilt is going to be 67 and a half inches by 81. Yeah. What? Yeah. And then they put a slap a general name like it's going to be a picnic quilt mm -hmm. yeah. on it. Yeah. So here are the sizes of sort of regulation mattresses. And for our Canadian and European friends also in, in uh, metric, Scott at jaftex.com, and you can get the whole card back and see that. And on the back is a little bit of some education for you and your employees about how to deal with people who buy a pattern and then say, but I want to make it queen size. So this is your cheat sheet when you need some knowledge for how to upsell those patterns. And... Uh, I do think that many times people overestimate the size of the quilt versus the size of their ability. Okay? It just, it just happens. How many of you will go back home and right after Halloween you will get someone in who says, I want to make my boyfriend a quilt for Christmas. And he has a king size bed. Oh, sweetie. It's, it's hard to do that. That's when you need the 108s.